Yo guys, what's up? This is iOS 15, it's right here. I've got it in my hand on my iPhone at 12 Pro and I wanna run through all of the new features so you can get a better feel for the software. If you're like, hey, it's not out, I, I don't see it on my phone, how did you get this? It's because Apple released it for developers only right now. So you can sign up to be a developer if you want early access or you can wait till July for a free public beta, but the actual release is not happening until sometime this fall whenever the new iPhones ship. So this is iOS 15, there's tons of upgrades around the entire operating system. Let's go ahead and jump in. First up, you can see on my home screen right here, there is a brand new wallpaper. And if you wanna get this early, I've actually got a download link over on my website. Uh, it's built into iOS 15. If you have the beta, you can go right here and it's at the very top. Uh, it's got a light mode and a dark mode, which is really nice. I'm actually a huge fan of the wallpaper. iOS 14 just didn't hit right, but these blobs of glowing stuff is like kind of my vibe. I wanna start off by taking a look at some of the new UI changes. For example, like Notification Center looks a lot different because, well, notifications look a lot different. Basically, Apple has redesigned these to be more intuitive and also tying in a number of other features like this in Control Center called Focus. As it shows you right here, it allows you to stay focused on what's important. So for example, if you're going to sleep, you just tap on that and notifications will have very specific behaviors because you are sleeping. And you can set this up right here. What people are allowed, what apps are allowed to come through, time sensitive notifications, or you can even share your focus status. This will like tell other apps and people, hey, this dude, this dude trying to sleep right now. But it goes even further than that. You can have a custom home screen whenever you enable this. So you can literally change the way your home screen works when you're in one of these modes. Now, I haven't played around with it that much just because I, I don't know, I kind of like my home screen the way that it is. But if you just want a work home screen, you could swipe up, go here, tap on your work setting and it would do that or just your personal apps and it would go to that. It's honestly really brilliant, especially if you use like a work phone as your personal phone. And going back in the notification center, you can even notice right here that it shows that it's enabled and my background has been darkened based on this mode. So I wanna go out of this. I just wanna do something chill right now. I wanna turn this off. So you just tap on that and you're back into the normal view and of course your normal home screen if it's something that you changed. But there have been also a number of updates around the rest of the operating system on the iPhone. You can see the table cells are now inset where they used to go edge to edge. It looks nicer and honestly, iOS feels fresh. Even going in and out of apps right now, the animation here has been adjusted a little bit. It's like a little bit more springy, a little bit more taut, and I really like it. Like the stability of this in my hand, you know, I've only used it for a short time, but I'm telling you already, it feels great. But listen, if this guy's not gonna sit here and tell you the truth, then I will. He he ain't been using protection. He's been raw dogging everything out there, all right? And he's caught them all, as they say. He's got to start being safe online. He's got to use Wii... Uh, my accent went away, but he's got to use Wii VPN. Listen, you guys know Wii VPN. They're the guys that came from all the other VPN companies doing sketchy stuff with your data to create a fundamentally better product that was one of the best, fastest, and most reliable options on the entire market. And recently, I've heard some birds chirping outside, which means that it's spring and Wii VPN has launched their spring sale for the two years plan, which gets you 73% off and two months for free free at only $2.69 a month. This gives you access to all their premium features, over 50 server locations around the world, and even the ability to unblock content from Netflix, Hulu, BBC iPlayer, and so much more. And when you enter the code IUPDATE at checkout, you get an additional 10% off. So my challenge is this, whether you've been using a different VPN for years, ew, yuck, or this is your first time hearing about a VPN, head over to wevpn.com slash IUPDATE today if you trust me, if you like what I do here, and start staying safer online. Next up, let's talk about FaceTime, which Apple has made an insane number of improvements to. Already, you'll notice the first one right here, that you can create a link to a FaceTime. Right here, you could create a link and text it to people where they could join just like a Zoom. I mean, if Apple wasn't directly competing with Zoom before, it's pretty obvious that they are now. And there's also a button right here that we've never had just called New FaceTime, where it will suggest people in your contacts to FaceTime, or you can do a FaceTime audio call down there. But more so than this, it's what happens when you get into a call on iOS 15. And unfortunately, because nobody I know has the iOS 15 update yet, I can't like demonstrate these features yet. However, we can look at them on Apple's website website and they show us a number of crazy things that we've wanted forever, like the ability to watch TV shows and movies together. I promise you this is not some kind of a sick joke where I just wanted to get you all excited to let you down harder. In the end, no, you can watch TV shows and movies, even listen to music or share your screen with something called SharePlay 
and it allows you to do that in FaceTime. So you guys can all watch stuff together. I mean, this would have been great like during the pandemic, but hey, I'll still take it. But by far the most astonishing thing about FaceTime on iOS 15 is that it works with Android and, and PC. So you can send someone a link and they can join your call on the web using FaceTime. So FaceTime for Android and PC is technically here. It's incredible. Now we're just waiting for iMessage. Now next up inside of the Messages app, there have also been some UI changes. For example, you have the immediate option to FaceTime in the top right hand corner. And when you tap on somebody's name, like it'll go straight into their contact card right here. And coming later this year, you'll have the ability to pin individual messages. But in beta one, it just doesn't seem like it's been enabled yet. And of course, because it's Apple, there's some new emoji stuff as well. Like there's a cochlear in pant for accessibility options. There's also new hairstyles and you can customize it to be like a gradient now if you go over to hairstyle You can do highlights and set how you want it to be It's uh, you know, it's okay I've never been a big memoji guy, but they're here probably the biggest quality of life improvement is you can just directly tap to download a photo rather than having to like tap and hold then hit save you can just tap and, uh, you know, it's kind of still redundant that it asks you to tap again, but that option being presented very clearly will make it very obvious that that's how you download a photo. Now, next up inside of the Maps application, I think the Maps team has spent too much time inside because they've actually been making some incredible updates. Like, there's a brand new 3D view that looks even better. I mean, Apple has been killing it in recent history, but like, just the depth on all these individual houses and the trees is pretty phenomenal. Like that's something you're not gonna see on Google Maps. Say what you will about Apple Maps, but they have been the most improved by far in recent years. I mean, the maps look so lifelike and vivid. They've even got these new like little icons for points of interest when you go around, like this is in the Bay Area. It's not available everywhere yet, but I mean, this is really nice looking. Um, there's also a great new night mode whenever you go here. It's like moonlit and reflective. I know these are tiny changes, but like as somebody's, I guess a freaking nerd, like these are really cool for me. The world looks great. And hey, when you keep zooming out, watch what happens now on iOS 15 maps. You actually get to see a globe. This is the first time that I believe we've ever been able to do this on the iPhone. It's always just stopped in North America. And now we, we have Google Earth built in right here. But that's not necessarily all that's changed because if we go back down here to California, Apple's introduced some new options as well, like different kinds of maps. Tapping through each of these, you can see how different it actually ends up looking because it puts the focus in a totally different area. I, I mean, I think it's incredible. Honest to God, Apple Maps is looking better and better by the day. Plus there's this, like walking directions and augmented reality. This has been a concept that we've been dreaming of for years and it's actually happening on iOS 15. So Apple Maps, it gets the A plus from me. It, it really is coming together miraculously. They saved the sinking ship. And speaking of a sinking ship, I think we're gonna have some thoughts on Safari. Hey, does this look different to anybody? Let me just, uh, let me show you that this is not a third party app. This is Safari on iOS 15. We're gonna tap right there. Um, hey, look, the top looks a little different right and uh in the bottom looks really different so this is a brand new version of safari with a redesigned tab view this looks like some kind of a leak because i'm i'm sus about it all right i think it looks all right it's great for viewing your tabs i like this view for for navigating here but when you go on a new page right like everything disappears and it's completely inverted like you know how everything used to be at the top now that completely fades away and everything to like switch pages or do more things is down here and it's pages or three dots. Now this is cool to switch tabs just like you would in apps on the iPhone. You just swipe down here. That's pretty ingenious. And I think this is gonna be something that like is kind of jarring at first, but we get used to it. Of course, to go to a new page, you would just do that and then you're here. I mean, as far as a full screen browsing experience, you have about the same screen real estate as before but I do think it's an improvement overall, even after just using it for a couple minutes. I started out not really liking it, and I, I think it's okay. It'll just take a little bit of getting used to because, you know, it's uh, it's Safari. Like, <laughs> this is something that's been the same for basically as long as the iPhone's been out. And the Photos app has gotten even better, like this great memory of me burying my grandma last year. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how the hell the app picks the photos. I put it on my iPad today. It shows me a picture of my ex within three seconds of updating that I haven't seen in a year. Then I open up the photos app on my iPhone and it's my grandmother's funeral. Like, what are, like, like, why don't, like, this one's cute. Me on my little internship are like, wow, I remember making that dinner in, like, Peoria. Or even this one, like a recent of me with my friends. No, we're just gonna show me 
She's gonna show me my ex and my, my dead grandma. Great guys, love that. But in photos, like it actually has gotten a lot better. There's this cool new editing feature where it will obviously, it's always thrown together the memories and it'll, okay, let's calm down because I'm probably gonna get copyright striked. Anyway, when you go here, there's a ton of settings you can change. Like here, you can adjust the pacing of the song and, and the vibe and like on demand, I can't play the music again, but on demand, it is like restructuring. Or if you just want to put your own song in here, you can do this as well. You can search for any song that you have in your library, even your recently added stuff. Let's say I'm feeling like a sad boy. Let's put on 734 by Juice World. And well, again, I can't play. I, it would be great if I could demo this. I can't, but just trust me, it's pretty sick. Probably the most useful in the new photos app is this feature right here, where when you tap on it, it automatically finds and seeks the text and then you can do something with it, right? Like you can literally copy it like so. Uh, look up and it'll show you exactly. Now, listen, this also kind of like works for other things and in the camera app. So let's try it out in the camera app and see what happens. You can see we've clearly got text right here. It's found it, you tap on that. And uh, let's see, let's see what it thinks this says. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Okay, it nailed it. Yeah, it found all the text. I have a feeling it's gonna get real weird down there, but hey. You can select this. I mean, that's pretty impressive. This is a photo I just took and it's selectable like that. I mean, hey, that's that's amazing. Like that's the Photos app upgrade I wanted. Next up in the health app, Apple is improving trends to expand to more things. It's been pretty limited historically, but the biggest new feature is this new sharing tab right here where you can share your data privately with someone. Now, at first you're gonna be like, why would I ever let this data leave this device? Or why would I ever share something that's so personal? Well, in the keynote, Apple demonstrated that you could like keep watching after your older parents or your kids. And if your, let's say, 78 year old mother's resting heart rate was going up suddenly, that like you could check and see what's going on, you know, not just to make sure she's okay mentally, but maybe physically there could be something at play. So I, I think this is actually really impressive. Now, if you were watching really closely, you might notice that the weather widget looks just a bit different. Like it's a bit darker on the top than it used to be. That's not just a UI change, that's due to a huge overall of the weather app right here with tons of additional options for viewing clouds or a cloudy day or like the sun. That's literally what the sun has been doing is peeking out behind the clouds. There's some new UI in here as we've talked about for other apps right here where you can see what's coming up, but you've also got an insane amount of data down here as well. This is something we've never had with actually nice info. That's not just text. It's like little tiles that look great. Most impressively though is this right here, which shows a temperature map and you could just go out and see how it's going. Obviously the Great Lakes are chilly. Ooh, it looks hot down there. I wanna go there. I wanna go here. Take me to California. Oh, it looks so sweet. Sorry, I'm just like nutting over California in the middle of this video. My bad. And if you tap up here, you've got options for air quality, but most importantly, precipitation. We have never had radar on the iPhone. And look, there's radar. We have actual stuff for the week showing you what it's gonna be like. I mean, this is phenomenal. I can't believe, you know, it's not like as live as other apps, but the fact that we can finally do this, guys, this isn't the weather app. This is not a third party app. This is the actual weather app. It's a pretty, pretty darn big upgrade. Obviously, Apple added widgets in iOS 14, but they are back with some fresh ones on iOS 15. First up, there is a new app store widget that looks like this, um, which will show you kind of what's going on, basically the top stories of the day in the app store. Find My has also found a widget as well with a lot of different options, including your items, and you could always keep tabs on something, like I could actually use this for my bike that is stored in my building that I live in. This would be really helpful to know like where it's at, what's going on, or if, you know, it got swiped. And Game Center now has a widget. And for some reason, they just went super hard with like one, two, three, four, five, six different widgets for Game Center. You can see what your friends are playing or you can continue playing some games. And it's, I mean, that's, that's a cool looking widget. I like the bright, vibrant colors. You've now got the hat for Game Center on iOS 15. So some nice widgets changes and as well, like affecting some of the UIs of existing widgets too. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but Siri has gotten significantly better year over year. I know I'm probably gonna eat my words in like three seconds for this demo, but it even works offline. So open music, see how it's able to do that instantly. Open the app store app. You could see we're, we're still working on it. It's okay. We, we got to the app store anyway. Send a message to mom. And you can see it will obviously tell you if your iPhone's offline. That was a test, Siri. Set a timer for 10 seconds. Instant. 
cancel that timer. I mean, it's really good. Like, again, it's not perfect, but the fact that you can do all of that offline now is really impressive. It's using your on-device processing and power rather than an Apple server, which is more private, and it's just a lot quicker. And of course, there's way more to iOS 15 than what I've showed you here today. So stay tuned for a hidden features video that I'm working on, where we're gonna look at the deep cuts, go app by app, and show you all of those secret changes that Apple kind of put in here year over year. So that's your first look at iOS 15. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, hit subscribe for more, and I'll catch all of you in my next video.